Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home a Poulon, and uh, this one, well, like everything else, doesn't run. It is uh, powered by a 17 and a half horse uh, Briggs & Stratton, and has a 42 inch deck. Now, I don't know much about it. The guy I bought it from actually got it at an auction, and he thought, given its appearance, that this would be an easy score. Uh, but he could not get it running, so uh, that's how I got it. Anyway, um, he did turn it over for me, so I think I have a fair idea what's going on. But just to show you, the engine does turn, and it has pretty good compression. So from that point of view, I think the engine is solid, but there is definitely something keeping this thing from starting. So. Let me get you set up in a stand. I just turn it over and kind of show you what it's doing. So as I think you could see, it did kind of turn over and I can hear it puffing and puffing for lack of a better word. And you know, that tells me it has spark. So the only thing we're left with is fuel and timing. And I can smell the fuel, so I don't think fuel is the problem. It's most likely timing. So I'm gonna show you how to check the timing without removing the flywheel. Of course, if the timing's off, you're gonna have to pull the flywheel, but you know, why do that if you don't have to? So I'm just gonna get this shroud off so you can see better kind of the position of the flywheel versus the magnet and the ignition coil. Just two bolts in the front, two bolts in the back, and then one screw right here. That is a pretty clean looking engine. So, um, in order to check timing, you know, I can pull the uh, flywheel nut and take a look. Uh, another way too is just to pull the spark plug, find top dead center, and just locate where the magnet is on the flywheel versus the ignition coil. So that's what I'm gonna do first, it's a bit easier, because if it's not a timing issue, um, that saves a bit of time. Okay, so this is top dead center, and you can see the magnet position just clearing the coil. That's when it's going to spark. So this actually looks like it's timed pretty well. So I'm not going to pull this and check the key because I actually think it's okay. Um, I'm going to get this valve cover off and see what's going on under there. The spark plug on the right is the one I pulled out. I mean, that thing just looks to be a complete mess. So I'm kind of suspicious of that plug. I'm gonna hook it up and just watch the spark and uh, make sure it's working. Actually, look at that. It's touching the electrode. There's no way that's gonna spark properly. So, um, Geez, it could be as simple as that. I've got this other plug here. I believe it's the same type. 
I'm going to throw this one in, see if it starts. running better but seeing the spark plug the way that it was is making me a little bit more concerned about the top end you know potentially a blown head gasket valve issue um, it's making some weird noises in here so uh, I'm gonna get the valve cover off and see if I can't see anything Wow, that is way out of spec. Look at that. So why would that be like that? The rod looks okay. I see the problem now. That that little guy is supposed to be on there like that. Yeah, and that makes the clearance a lot tighter. Okay. I feel better about that now. So somehow this um, rotator popped out and then of course gave excessive clearance. And yeah, now we got the issue that we have. So is it as simple as this? I don't know, but I'm gonna put this back on, uh, reset the clearance and uh, give it another try. So one thing to note, hopefully you can see uh, this stud in here, and I went to loosen this here, and you can see that stud is loose. So that's probably what led to the excessive clearance, which allowed the rotator to pop out and um, all this trouble. So I'm going to, I don't know the torque specs offhand, so I'm just going to snug this up for now, reset the clearance to about four or five thousandths temporarily throw the cover back on and just see if things are running any better. Okay, let's try this again. Very nice. I was a little nervous. I didn't think it would be that easy. I thought it was gonna be um, something wrong with the head, but 
I mean, I guess there was something wrong with the head. It just was not nearly as severe as I thought. Uh, it could have been a lot worse, actually, if I'd kept running it. The push rod was kind of slapping around in there. I could hear something banging around. I thought it might actually be in the, um, kind of in the crank, the lower end. But um, yeah, we got lucky on this one. The rotator fell off due to the stud coming out and was just floating around in there. So I'm gonna look up the proper specs for those studs and um, proper clearance. And I'll turn you back on once I got those numbers and I wanna torque everything properly. Probably put some um, thread locker on those studs so that doesn't happen again. Anyway, turn you back on in a second. Didn't have much luck finding the exact torque specs for this engine, but did find a lot of specs for Briggs in general. And from what I can tell, rocker cover is about 60 inch pounds. The studs are about 100, uh, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay, that's way too much, but I'm gonna put thread locker on both of these to hopefully prevent this from happening again. All right, that's 80. Hundred. Hundred it is. I did find the specs for the valves. Intake is supposed to be between three and five thousand, so I'm gonna go with four. That's pretty good. Okay, I actually got this wrong. I wasn't paying attention. So the valve that was loose um, was not the intake, it was actually the exhaust. And kind of the giveaway for this was the fact that this bottom one is an aluminum push rod. You know, I saw this going in here and just assumed it was this valve. But it actually, there's a channel that goes down to here. So the intake is the bottom, that one was fine. The exhaust was the issue. So I do need to reset this actually to six thousandths and this one should be four. Okay, so I cleaned the surfaces up, made them nice and smooth, degreased it, and I uh, got some gasket maker on here. Now, um, I did double check just to make sure there wasn't actually supposed to be a gasket here, and for this engine, they just recommend RTV, so that's what I'm going with. Okay, so I'm gonna let that set up for about an hour and then just torque it down to 60 inch pounds.
Okay, this white filter, I think is a paper-based filter, which is not really recommended for gravity-fed systems. So I'm gonna throw a red one on there and uh, put a fuel shut off as well. not too bad uh, this mower it it drives great runs great cuts great uh, it even turns great the turning radius on it's fantastic so uh, I like this mower a lot I mean it, it is a simple you know bare bones I guess lawn tractor but you know I'm actually quite happy with it so I might keep this one anyway hope this video helps someone thanks for watching wanted to try it out. Runs well.